good morning dear students today we will discuss about the satellite communication in the subject of principle of communication so there are some contents of satellite communication so what is satellite what is satellite communication satellite architecture elements for satellite communication orbit for satellite communication evolution of satellite communication service of satellite communication frequency band and beams advantage of satellite communication application of satellite communication the future of satellite communication and conclusion so that is the contents of the satellite communication so what is the satellite an artificial body placed in orbit around the earth to collect information for for communication so for example earth is a satellite because it orbits the sun so earth we have as a satellite because it orbits the sun so a communication satellite is a radio relay station in orbit above the earth it receives amplifiers and redirects analog and digital signals carried on a specific radio frequency so satellite communication play a vital role in the global of telecommunication system so architecture of satellite so there is a array solar array and a telemetry attitude control commanding and fuel batteries power thermal systems and down converting pre amplifier filters and high power amplifier filters and transponder transmitter section and transponder receiver section and so earth station and antenna also here and uh, there is uplink and downlink also in the architecture of the satellites so elements of satellites two major elements of satellite communication systems are first one is the space segment and second one is the ground segment so these two segments are as a represented by the in the picture of these two segments so in satellite there is a uplink and downlinks and the antenna also at the earth stations so uplink in the uplink user send a information and uh, next to the terrestrial system in next one is the earth station and earth station by the help of transmitter to transmit the with the help of uplink and in downlink there is a uh, antenna receive the signal and with earth station and next terrestrial system and users so this is the basic satellite structures in space segment includes satellite means for launching satellite electrical power space power systems mechanical structure communication transponders communication antenna attitude and orbit controls and systems so satellite control central function tracking of the satellite receiving data 
an, an eclipse management of satellite. Commanding the satellite for station keeping and determining orbital parameters from tracking and ranging data. So switching on of, of different such system as per the operational requirements. The ground segment consists of earth stations, rearward communication links, user terminal and interface, network control center, transmit equipment, receive equipment and antenna systems. So this is the orbits picture view. The path a satellite follow around a planet is defined as an orbit. So satellite orbit are classified in two broad categories. First one is known geostationary orbit NGSO and second one is geostationary orbit GSO. So early ventures with satellite communication used satellite in known geostationary low earth orbit due to the technical limitations of the launch vehicles in placing satellite in high orbits. So classification of NGO, NGSO as per the orbital plane are, first one is polar orbit. In polar orbit, the satellite moves from pole to pole and inclination is equal to 90 degrees. In equatorial orbits, in equatorial orbits, the orbital plane lie in the equatorial plane of the Earth and the inclination is zero or very small. And inclined orbits. So in inclined orbit, all orbits other than polar orbit and equatorial orbit are called inclined orbit. So there are some advantage of NGSO. So first one is less booster power required. Second one is less delay in transmission path. Third one is reduced problem of eco in voice communications. And next one is suitability for providing service at higher latitude. And last one is lower cost to build and launch satellite at NGSO. And also there are some disadvantage of NGSO. So complex problem of transferring signal from one satellite to another. Less expect, expected life of satellite at NGSO. Require frequent replacement of satellite compared to satellite in GSO. Problem of increasing space, stress in the outer space. So requirement of a large number of orbiting satellite for lower coverage. As each low Earth orbit satellite covers a small portion of the Earth surface for a short time. Next one is the geostationary orbit GSO. So in GSO, there is only one geostationary orbit possible around the Earth. Lying on the Earth's equatorial plane, the satellite orbiting at the same speed as the rotational speed of the Earth on its axis. So there are some advantage of 
GSO. There is a simple ground station tracking, nearly constant range, and very small frequency shift. And there are some disadvantages also. So, in disadvantage, transmission delay of the order of 150 millisecond. Second is large free space loss. And third one is low polar coverage. So, satellite orbit in term of the orbital height according to distance from Earth. So, geosynchronous Earth orbit, GEO, and second one, medium Earth orbit, MEO, and third one is low Earth orbit, LEO. So, in this diagram, there is a low orbit, transfer orbit, and geostationary geo stations which is as shown in this diagram so geo is the 35786 km above the earth so geo stationary orbit altitude is 22282 miles We can see in this diagram also here. And MEO is the 800 to 20,000 km of the R. So, medium earth or orbit altitude 8 to 20,000 km. So, average distance to moon is. 240,000 miles and next one is the Leo. This is 500 to 2,000 km above the earth and low earth orbit altitude 5 to 100 to 2,000 km. Average distance to moon is 240,000 miles. So, there are some frequency bands and uh, frequency range and wavelength of that frequency. So, first band is the extremely low frequency E and F. Have the frequency range less than 3 kilohertz and wavelength greater than 100 kilometer. And next band is very low frequency B and F which have frequency range 3 to 30 hertz and wavelength is 10 to 100 kilometers. And next one band is low F, low frequency LF, which have the frequency range 30 to 300 kilohertz and wavelength 1 to 10 kilometers. Next one medium frequency band, which have frequency range 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz and wavelength 100 meter to 1 kilometer. And next, high frequency HF, which has frequency range 3 to 30 megahertz and wavelength 10 to 100 meters. And next one, very high frequency VHF, which has frequency range 30 to 300 megahertz and wavelength range 1 to 10 meters. And next one is UHF ultra high frequency band, which have frequency 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz, and uh, wavelength is 10 centimeter to 1 meter. And next band is super high frequency SHF, which have the frequency range 3 to 30 gigahertz, and have the wavelength 1 to 10 centimeter. And also, next band is extremely high frequency EHF, which have the frequency range 30 to 
300 gigahertz and wavelength range is 1 mm to 1 centimeter so these are the frequency bands so where you frequency bands so in mobile satellite service and a micro and narrow band voice and data that is the l band which have the frequency 1.4 to 1.6 gigahertz and second a band edge s band which have frequency 2.2 to 2.6 gigahertz which is used in digital audio radio service and the next one is c band which have frequency 4 to 7 gigahertz and used in fixed satellite service shared with terrestrial and next one is s x band which have frequency 8 to 10 gigahertz and uh, used in fss government exclusive use and next one is k u band which have frequency 11.7 to 14.5 gigahertz and the uh, broadband not shared with terrestrial and next is the k u band with frequency of 12 to 2 gigahertz to 18.8 gigahertz and which is used for broadband satellite service next band is k a band which have the frequency 20 to 30 gigahertz and a use as a broadband service not shared with so these are the some frequency bands which have frequency band and use of these band in different fields so next one evolution of satellite communication so during early 1950 both passive and active satellites were considered for the purpose of communication over a large distance so passive satellite though successfully used in the early years of satellite communications with the advancement in technology active satellite have completely replaced the passive satellites a satellite that only reflects signals from one earth station to another or from several earth stations to several others in reflect the incident electromagnetic radiations without any modification or amplification it can't generate power they simply reflect the incident power so first one is passive satellite the first artificial passive satellite eco first of nasa was launched in august 1960 so disadvantage the earth station require high power to transmit signals so this is the disadvantage and next one large earth station with tracking facilities were expensive and a global system would have required a large number of passive satellite assessed randomly by different users and control of satellite not possible from ground so the large attenuation of the signal while traveling the large distance between the transmitter and the receiver by the satellite was one of the most serious problem so these are the some disadvantages next one is the active satellites so in active satellite it amplify or modify and retransmit the signal from the earth so satellite which can transmit power are called active satellite and have several 
advantage over the passive satellites. So require lower power earth station and less costly. So this is the picture view of the active satellite. World first active satellite was Explore Satellite Communication Orbit Relay Equipment, launched by U.S. Air Force in 1958 at orbital height of 110 to 900 miles. The first fully active satellite was Orion and launched into an orbit of 600 to 700 miles by Department of Defense in 1960. So there are some disadvantages of the active satellite. So first disadvantage requirement of larger and powerful rocket to launch heavier satellite in orbit. So requirement of an board power supply Interruption of service due to failure of electronics components. Service of satellite. One way link different satellite communication, two way link also we can see in this in these diagrams one way link, two way link and different satellite communications. One way satellite service are broadcast satellite service, radio, TV, data broadcasting, safety service SH, search and rescue disaster warning and, uh, and next one way satellite service are radio determination satellite service position location and next one standard frequency and time signal satellite service and next one is space research service and space operation service and earth exploration satellite service. Two-way satellite service are fixed satellite service, so telephone, fax, high bit rate, data, etc. These are the two-way satellite service. And mobile and mobile satellite service, land mobile, marine time mobile, aero mobile, personal communications. So these are the two-way satellite service and a satellite news gathering inter-satellite service. So what is the advantage of satellite communication? Universal satellite communication are available virtually everywhere. And versatile satellite can support all of today communication needs. Reliable satellite is a proven medium for supporting a company communication needs and a seamless satellite inherent strength as a broadcast medium makes it perfect. Fast since satellite network can be set up quickly, companies can be fast to market with new services. So, flexible, expandable, high quality, quick provision of service, mobile and emergency communication suitable for both digital and analog transmission. So these are the 
some applications of the satellites and also in the field of telephones television digital cinema radio internet access multi what is the future future communication satellite will have more on board processing capability second one more power and larger aperture antenna that will enable satellites to handle more bandwidth so the demand for more bandwidth will ensure the long term viability of the commercial satellite industry well into the 21st century in addition other technical innovations such as low cost reusable launch vehicles are in development further improvement in satellite open propulsion and power systems will increase their service life to 20 to 30 years from the current 10 to 15 years so in conclusion by going through the above the slide we came to know that satellite is mostly responsible for telecommunication transmission reception of television signals with our forecasting and which is very important in our daily life so now we will come to on the next topic 4g wireless technology so the contents of 4g technology object introduction generation timeline features telecom company develop 4g global top 5g 4g market advantage disadvantage and application also so in objective mms multimedia message service wireless broadband service video chat tv mobile and digital video broadcasting and global roaming so what is the introduction of 4g wireless technology a 4g system will be able to provide a solution where voice data and stream multimedia can be given to the users on any time anywhere basis and higher data rates than the previous generation so it is wireless access technology and is a successor of 3g communication at 100 megabit per second while moving and 1 gigabit per second while stationary so there are different generations timelines and different technology so technology design began 4g 1g 2g 2.5g 3g and 4g and uh, so technology design began 1g in 1972 2g in 1980 2.5G in 1985 and 3G 90 and 4G 2000 and the implementation of 1G in 84 2G 1991 2.5G 
and uh, 5G, sorry, 3G 2002 and 4G 2010 and service of 1G, analog voice, 2G, digital voice, SMS, 2.5G, higher capacity, packet data, MMS, and 3G, higher capacity broadband data, and 4G, higher capacity, completely IP multimedia. And standard of 1G is AMPS, TECS, and MT, and 2G, TDMA, CDMA, GSM, PDC, and 2.5G, GPRS, EDRG, and 3G, WCDMA and CDMA 2000 and 4G single standard. And data bandwidth in 1G, 1.9 kilobit per second, and 2G, 14.4 kilobit per second, and 2.5G is 384 kilobit per second, and 3G, 2 megabit per second, and 4G, 200 megabit per second. And multiplexing, in 4G, FDMA, 2G, TDMA, CDMA, and 2.5G, TDMA, CDMA, and uh, in 3G, CDMA, and uh, 4G, CDMA. So features 4G networks are all IP-based heterogeneous networks. Second, wider bandwidth higher bit rates. Third one is global mobility and service portability. Fourth one, support interactive multimedia services. And next one, teleconference, conferencing, wireless internet, etc. Why 4G? Higher bandwidth enables a range of new applications for the consumer. Video calls, video clips, news, music, sports, video streaming, TV broadcast, enhance, gaming, chat, location, services. Telecom companies developing 4G, so NTT, DO, CMO, Japan. These are the telecom companies which developing 4G. And second one, DigiBay, Ireland. And next one, Sprint, Chicago. Very Zone Wireless and Vodafone Grove, American Wireless provider. Clear wires, etc. So, global top 5 4G market in 2014. So, US and 31% and 11% in Japan and 40% in other country and 4% Germany and 5% Korea and 9% China. So what is the advantage of 4G technology? 4G technology have the high speed data rate of 100 megabit per second for mobile and 1G GBPS while stationary and it is 10 times faster than 3G and low cost access technology service and application can unlimitedly be run through wireless backbone over wireline backbone using IP address. So there are some disadvantage also of 4G technology. So an advantage new technology which make it very expensive. 
and it is not available in many locations of the world. So that is the disadvantage of 4G technology. What is the application of 4G technology? So, in application, it is applicable in various wireless technology like LTE, Wi-Fi, and also used in device like cell phones, laptops, digital cameras, printers, and so on. So, these are the some applications of 4G wireless technology. In conclusion, the mobile technology though reached only at 3G, now 4G offers us to provide with a very efficient and reliable wireless communication system for roaming over various network including internet which use IP network. The 4G system will be implemented in the coming years which area miracle in the field of telecommunication engineering technology So, next technology is the 5G wireless technology. So, introduction of the 5G technology. So, 5G stands for fifth generation wireless technology. It is a name which is used in some of the research papers and going to become a next major phase of mobile telecommunication beyond the current 4G standard. It is a concept which is only theory not real. So it changed the way we are using wireless gadget by providing very high bandwidth. And it add a low of advantage over the present 4G technology. The router or switch we are going to use in 5G network would provide high connectivity with wireless device. So we use router or switch for using 5G network. So second G generation, 2G referred to the second generation of mobile telecommunication. It was developed in last 1980 and complete in late 1990. It is based on digital system. It provides a speed of up to 64 kilobit per second. And it provides service like voice and SMS with more clarity. It provides semi-global facilities. Next, 3G. So it was developed between 1990 and early 2000 and even present days. So it provides a transmission speed from 125 kilobit per second to 2 mega. Uh, bit per second, 2 megabit bit per second. It provides superior voice quality and video conference. It provides global facilities. 
फोर जी स्टैंड फॉर फोर जनरेशन मोबाइल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन इट वॉज डेवलप इन दर टू थाउजेंड टेन इट इज फास्टर एंड मोर रिलायबल इट प्रोवाइड स्पीड अप टू हंड्रेड मेगा बिट पर सेकेंड एंड इट प्रोवाइड हाई परफॉर्मेंस लाइक अपलोडिंग एंड डाउनलोडिंग स्पीड इट प्रोवाइड ईजी रोमिंग एज कंपेयर टू थ्री जी फाइव जी इट इज नेक्स्ट मेजर फेज ऑफ मोबाइल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन एंड वायरलेस सिस्टम इट इज टेन टाइम मोर फास्टर देन फोर जी सो इट हैज एक्सपेक्टेड स्पीड ऑफ वन गीगा बिट पर सेकेंड एंड लोएस्ट कॉस्ट देन द प्रीवियस वर्जन इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कम अराउंड द ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी और ट्वेंटी वन architecture of 5g technology so application layer presentation layer and the session layer transport layers and the network layers data link layers physical layer osi layers and the 5g mobile network layers so owa stand for open wireless architecture this layer is used to define the wireless technology to be used physical layer plus data link layer equal to owa network layer is divided into two sub layers first one is lower network layer and second upper network layer and network layer used to route the data from source to destination open transport layer perform the operation of both transport layer and session layer transport layer plus session layer equal to otl application layer is responsible for providing good quality of service and application layer select the best wireless connection for given service so what is the hardware and software of 5g technology in 5g technology hardware users uw b ultra wide band network with higher bandwidth at low energy levels and bandwidth is of 4000 megabit per second which is 400 times faster than today wireless network and next one users smart antenna and uses cdma for division multiple access so this is the 5g hardware next one is 5g software so 5g will be single on unified standard of different wireless network including lan technology lan wan and ww worldwide wireless wave unified ip and seamless combination of broadband and software defined radio encryption flexibility and anti virus so these are the some hardware and software so thank you and thank you very much